within our recommendations on human rights, FWCC has also addressed indigenous and minority rights. The FWCC notes the rights of indigenous persons as set out in the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, that this must be considered holistically, and the recognition of cultural rights must not be permitted to derogate from the rights of individual, the individual rights of women and children to equality. In the FWCC presentations, we also focus on the structure of government with recommendations around the parliamentary system, electoral system, the judiciary, separation of powers, people's direct political representation, participatory democracy, the Bosele Bumakuturanga, and the military security forces. We have also made recommendations around governance and accountability. I would like to focus on the judiciary, governance and accountability, and the military security forces. As an organization that works directly with human rights violations, in particular the violation of women's human rights, the FWCC is particularly concerned about the issue of access to justice. The coup of 5th December 2006 and developments beginning with the illegal removal of Chief Justice Fatiaki, culminating in the purported abrogation of the Constitution, have compromised the courts significantly. This has been compounded by the increasing tendency to prohibit appeals from decisions by government departments and statutory bodies by decree, whether to independent third parties or to the courts. Restoring both the integrity and the credibility of the courts will be a continuing and immense challenge that will take time and commitment. It is critical that for appropriate access to justice, an enabling environment needs to be created. The FWCC is calling for, as some interim measures, the establishment of a constitutional court above that of the present courts to exercise supervisory jurisdiction while the judiciary is re reviewed and reformed with the intention of restoring confidence and trust both amongst judicial officers and in the eyes of the public. The Constitutional Court would assume a less prominent role once the process of restoration was completed. We also feel that the process of appointments within the judiciary needs to be addressed and these are detailed in our written recommendations. Amongst the judicial principles, we also call for the right to review all decisions made by government departments and statutory corporations, and that judicial appointments must promote the participation of women and reflect the cultural diversity of the population while having proper regard for merit. The judiciary should also receive ongoing human rights and gender sensitivity training. While the enumeration of rights and obligations in the Constitution is an essential starting point for good governance and the rule of law, the best constitutional provisions in the world will be of no consequence unless there is respect for the Constitution and the rule of law in all citizens, including members of the armed forces. We believe that Fiji needs to strengthen many aspects of its governance system, to ensure that democratic principles are adhered to at various levels and within various structures of the government system. Amongst other things, we are calling for the strengthening of the Auditor General's Office with more powers and the extension of its jurisdiction to assess the competence and efficiency of the public service, statutory corporations and the disciplined services, including the military. The Office of the Auditor General should also be able to recommend prosecutions where appropriate, and its independence and financial autonomy and tenure of its <coughs> officers should also be guaranteed. We are also recommending the establishment of a good governance commission, such as the one which exists in Liberia. The commission is to be set up by the Constitution, which has as its objective the promotion of the values of transparency, accountability, the rule of law, standards of ethics, constitutionalism, and political inclusion, and the dissemination of information about constitutionalism and the rule of law. The final issue that we would like to focus on is the military security forces. Since the coups of 1987 and 2000, and more especially since 5th December 2006, the military has come to regard itself as playing a natural role in national affairs. 
In the period since 1987, an entire generation of military officers have grown used to the idea that they have an additional dimension to their responsibility for national security, and that is as guardians of the public good. If we are to change the path that we have followed since 1987, of a, full, of a coup followed by a brief hiatus before another coup, then we need to deal with the factors that have created the opportunities for a coup. Chief among them is the military itself as an institution. A new constitution of itself will not prevent another coup, but the implementation and sustainability of the values it espouses, together with other more practical measures, would render that eventuality less likely in the future. We owe that to ourselves and to the generations as yet unborn. Some of our recommendations and interim measures include the following. The total withdrawal, and I repeat, the total withdrawal of the Fiji military forces from all current government structures to ensure a free and non-threatening process in the return to democracy. Resignation of all military officers in the public service to become civil servants and those intending to enter the political arena for the 2014 election. Establishing a mechanism for dialogue between the elected government and the military to facilitate the process of re-establishing civilian control and resolving any disputes or misunderstanding. This mechanism must adhere to the accepted principles of democracy, human rights, and the rule of law. In terms of the long-term measures, we would like a gradual reduction in the size of the military, bearing in mind that there are no external threats and the alleged concern with security as evidence in the invocation of the public emergency regulations was largely related to misconceived fears about challenges to the military regime's authority and its obsession with crushing dissenting voices simply for the sake of doing so. Thank you. Our presentation focuses on 13 areas of the Constitution. This presentation will only focus on three points. I will speak on the context we work in and the framework of our recommendations. Tara will touch on the two new rights we would like added to the Bill of Rights, and Jasmine will conclude by briefly explaining our position on temporary special measures. The Fiji Women's Rights Movement is a feminist, multicultural, non-government organization committed to removing discrimination against women. If the Warren practices and consistently promoted democracy, the rule of law, feminism, and human rights. We strive to empower women in Fiji, especially emerging young leaders. We've been around for 26 years and have consistently played a leading role in national, regional, and international debates on human rights. We are independently donor-funded. The recommendations we share today are the results of our conversations with women and girls around Fiji. These include two national women's forums and the many consultations that we've been part of across Fiji. The Fiji Women's Rights Movement maintains its publicly stated concerns about the current constitution-making process. These concerns relate to the legitimacy of the process as laid out in the two Fiji Constitutional Process Decrees, numbers 57 and 58, and its ability to deliver a fair, independent outcome to the people of Fiji. The decrees also contain problematic content, eliminating certain principles to eliminate for discussion on the basis that they're non-negotiable and demands for immunity. We believe the issue of immunity for coup perpetrators can only be decided following a truth, reconciliation, and justice process. We're also proposing a parallel citizens' assembly to support and expand the opinion base of the constituency assembly, as we remain concerned how the official CA will be formed and function. We are also concerned about the current environment in which this constitution process make, constitution making process is taking place. In particular, the continuing restrictive atmosphere in which citizens attempt to participate and the news media must operate. In this environment, the independent media is not confident to report fully and openly regarding issues that may reflect current critically on the current authorities. This in turn restricts the space for democratic debate and discussion, already hampered in the context of a military state. 